Hey guys, Emma here, also known as 8 Vinyl Low, bringing you all another video. Today's video is going to be just a brief update video, um, something that I wanted to show you guys in terms of some things that I've been adding into my music collection. This video does not include any vinyl, surprisingly. It's going to include other forms of physical media when it comes to music, but it's not going to include vinyl. So just wanted to give that disclaimer before we continue on in this video. So, so if you're here for the vinyl, now's time to click out. If you're still interested to see what I've added into just my music collection as a whole, then let's keep going. But just wanted to put that disclaimer out there. Um, so as you know, I am a huge fan of thrift stores, thrifting just in general when it comes to trying to find vinyl on the low and um i just love the thrill of the hunt that's one of my favorite things when it comes to vinyl collecting and so a couple weeks ago and i've shared this on my instagram so if you have an instagram and you haven't followed me yet check out my instagram it's just eight vinyl low same as my tag here on on youtube there's my shameless promo uh there for instagram i don't know uh but anyway regardless i've shared this on instagram so they got a I, if you follow me on there, you have already had a sneak peek about this, but if you don't follow me on there and or you want to see all of what I picked up in this haul that I'm going to show you, now's the time to see that. So I was at a thrift store about a couple of weeks ago and I found something for $8, something that I've wanted for a very long time because long story short, I don't collect cassettes. I never really have. I love it i love cassettes i don't have a problem with cassettes because it's still a form of physical media it's still fun to collect but i didn't really collect it the only cassettes that i had were a couple cheap trick cassettes for the sake of collecting cheap trick and being a completist as i am when it comes to that band but i never had anything to play them on until i went to a thrift store like i said about a couple weeks ago and i picked up this portable cassette player Again, it was about eight bucks. And um, yeah, I'm just, I'm super excited to have this in my collection. It's nothing fancy, it's nothing over the top. You know, it sounds decent, uh, it plays fine, it works fine. So no complaints when it comes to this, but again, it's nothing too fancy. I didn't really wanna spend a lot of money on a cassette player. So this was perfect when I saw it in the store. This is exactly, what I wanted, what I needed to play my Cheap Trick cassettes. So I picked this up and this was the first time I'd really seen this a portable cassette player at a thrift store. Normally it's the big bulky ones, again something that I didn't really want to spend. Normally those are about 20 bucks, I didn't want to spend that. Um, but for eight bucks for this portable player, I have no problem with it. It's small, it's easy to put into my kind of music corner, I'm happy with it. Again it works great, it sounds great, no problems. But on top of that, what I was really surprised about was that I found um, basically a box of cassettes. And my thrift store, one of them doesn't ne necessarily carry cassettes. I'd never really seen cassettes there. I don't know if, if people donate them and then they just get rid of them because they don't really sell. I'm not 100% sure what it is, but I had never seen cassettes at this particular thrift store until now. So I'm going to assume that the cassettes came into a lot with whoever donated the cassette player and i could definitely see why they chose to keep these cassettes to sell they were 10 cents each um, because they're really good titles and so now i have this player that i got basically to play my cheap trick cassettes on but i couldn't pass up these cassettes for 10 cents each at the at the thrift store i could not pass them up they're incredible titles some right down my alley a couple blues which i was extremely excited to find of course and then just some albums that i eventually wanted in my my vinyl collection but don't have yet so i'm going to share those with you now so you can kind of see what i picked up and then uh i'll show you a couple of cds also that i picked up so this was in the cassette lot first thing here we have the doors two on one this includes two albums of theirs their debut album and then waiting for the sun so this was super cool. Can't go wrong with this one. We have John Lee Hooker, The Real Folk Blues. 
This one I actually played uh, an afternoon, an early afternoon, a couple weeks ago when I first got the player. This is the Miles Davis Quintet route round about midnight. And I don't own any Miles Davis, even on vinyl. This is the first physical thing that I own of Miles Davis. And as you know, I'm trying to get into jazz. Of course, I know who Miles Davis is, but I just didn't own any of his stuff until now. And I will say this was my first time listening to this. I will say I absolutely loved it. So I'm definitely going to be on the lookout for more Miles Davis in the future. But this was kind of a great way to introduce me to one Miles Davis in general, and then to the music that he he's put out um, through this kind of 10 cent pickup. So, and I, I assume this would can only sound better on vinyl. We also have the best of the best of Chuck Berry, great compilation, fun compilation, Blues Legends. I was super excited to find this in that that haul that I picked up. Uh, favorite track off of this compilation is Little Milton's We're Gonna Make It. I love that song, so I was super excited to see it on, on here. A couple classic albums here, Dire Straits, Brothers in Arms. I have this on vinyl, but cool to pick up for cassette. I have like two copies of this one, Men at Work, Business as Usual. I just picked up uh, a copy of this on vinyl a couple months ago at my thrift shop. I showed a video of that when I was doing the vlog and all that. There's always a cheap, cheap Trick connection when it comes to me. We have Top Gun soundtrack. Of course, Cheap Trick recorded uh, the track Mighty Wings. So that was super fun. I want that on vinyl at some point. Wham! Make it big. Uh, Zeppelin 4. Can't go wrong. Rolling Stones, Voodoo Lounge, Billy Joel, Greatest Hits, Volume 1 and 2. And this one was one that I thought was super cool to find in that lot too. We have the Black Crow, Shake Your Money Maker. So those are the cassettes that I picked up with my portable cassette player. Uh, like I said, the player was about 8 bucks. The cassettes were 10 cents each. I don't think I paid more than, definitely paid about... I don't know what three bucks for all of those so can't beat it super excited i don't know how often i'm gonna pick up cassettes but if i find them for the low and it's an album or band that i enjoy i'm going to definitely pick them up and add them into my mini cassette collection now so uh, i also picked up that i just wanted to share with you guys a couple of cds i like looking at the cd section too while i'm at the thrift store sometimes you find something um, worth picking up. In this case, I found two things. The sealed CDs were $2 each. Normally, they're $0.99 cents if they're pre-owned, but the sealed new, $1.98, two, two bucks. Um, Sam and Dave, Stack 60th, compilation album, greatest hits. Love Sam and Dave. And then this one was super cool. I had never seen this before, and I picked it up right away. I grabbed it. We have Woody Guthrie's Roll Columbia 26 Northwest Songs. And I did some research on this because I wasn't 100% sure what this is. Basically, it's a two disc, 104 minutes, and it includes a, a 40 page, a 44 page booklet, which I haven't opened yet. So I'm excited to see what this is. But I'm extremely interested to see or to listen to and to hear what this sounds like because I did some research on it, and what I learned is that in 1941, the Bonneville Power Administration basically commissioned Guthrie to write songs to help promote the construction and building of dams on the Columbia River. And some of those songs were, of course, written, but then never recorded. And so basically what this is, is this is a compilation album from modern day artists who have some sort of connection to the Pacific Northwest, kind of putting in their interpretation of the song and recording it and then releasing it into this compilation album. So um, the, the cover I thought was cool. It says uh, Smithsonian Folkways Recordings. So my buddy Mike over at Jam on Vinyl, uh, I think he'll find this pretty cool. But again, I had never seen this before. I'd never heard of it. I'm anxious to listen to it and to hear what it sounds like. 
but it sounded really cool and definitely when I did some more research on it um, piqued my interest even more so I'm excited to listen to that so anyway that's my haul again no vinyl but definitely still relates to music still relates to my collection I just wanted to share with you all kind of what I've I've picked up over the last couple weeks so anyway that is all I have for this video for today I will see you all for my next video bye guys